I noticed a big, um, you know, boost in just morale and let's do some more, let's do, let's find out more, let's, you know, have them come talk, let's have the group come talk to us. So it, it got very exciting. The patterns of thinking concept has really opened my eyes as a teacher. I'm starting to see those patterns more clearly in everything that I'm thinking about. I do see uh, the patterns of thinking questions help change their thinking skills. It lets the child just kind of start with one tiny piece and just kind of walk it around. It's getting them to a whole new place that they have never explored before. I really like it when you can change, keep the model but change the subject. You know, like that is so cool. I use it for language arts, I use it for math, social studies, science. Whatever subject it is, I really think we can go to a deeper um, level. Guidance counselors are using think blocks and the patterns of thinking very successfully. And um, we've seen our math people come and use them and the reading specialists using them. So it's, and I've used them in the, it, for discipline. Just I think those are very universal skills and ways of analyzing that, that apply to everything and that um, I really want my students to be able to do. It's easy for me to organize the lessons now with the four patterns. Part whole really works uh, uh, helping a student break down and get into something where they can really grasp on. I believe that you know using patterns of thinking is helping me become a better teacher. I have definitely noticed it's changed the way I look at the things that they're telling me. The one thing that I tell my kids, I can't see inside your brains. You have to share your thinking with me and that's how we will create more knowledge together. I'm giving them more opportunities to to continue with that thinking rather than just kind of shutting that down and moving on to something else. A lot of ideas we talk about are not concrete and these are representational and they can represent anything you want. The think blocks actually let them touch the idea and it let them take their ideas and move them around. The manipulative part of it just opens it up to them. Even just pretending, adding those parts, I did, we did get more of a response, a better response from the children. You see their ideas, you see what they're thinking, you see how they're making things, connections, you see where you have to help them make their connections. It makes me come from this perspective of the teacher to say, okay, this person's thinking this because of this. Here's what I can do to help them. It helps me figure out what they know and, and don't know faster, so then I can sort of deal with a misconception quickly. Everyone had to talk at the same time and they couldn't even just wait to get their opinion out there. Um, you know, that very rarely happens. They're really engaged in it and they, you know, it's fun for them. Kids who usually don't raise their hand, you know, they wanted, they, I noticed more, you know, interaction that, that way, like pick me, pick me kind of thing. Some of my kids who are not great with paper and pencil, um, when it's this kind of activity and they get to use things that are hands-on, they, they are more engaged. Children that maybe didn't respond before are starting to get very involved with the process and taking risks and saying their part of what they think about um, what they're learning about. And um, they're freeing themselves up and, and becoming a, a learner. It helps you get the content across more quickly because you know exactly where it is and then you can move on to sort of maybe the, more the exploration or sort of the next step of things. And I took the blocks that I had and I put them in our writing center and when they would go to plan out their paragraphs, they've got the blocks right there, they're putting them through, they're coming up with their connections, their transition words. It was wonderful. Especially working with a population where English is the second language and to really give the children an opportunity to communicate what they're trying to say to me. Even the same question, they can answer it at different levels. And so it allows um, kids of varying abilities and backgrounds to participate in the same conversation. I think it made them become more independent. They were really able to kind of guide their own discussion. All comes back to their taking responsibility for their learning and making their connections with themselves and having them use that thinking method they can then build upon it later on. It's becoming part of who they are and then they're carrying that with them. If they have the patterns of thinking, if they have the ability 
to think about things and compare them and take a perspective and solve a problem and build relationships, I think that they're going to make it. They'll be okay. They'll be successful. They're going to be so well equipped to tackle whatever challenge comes along. If we can teach them to be um, you know, proficient thinkers and confident thinkers, then I think that, that that's going to do them well, whatever they end up doing in the future. Focusing on giving them these problem-solving skills and these thinking skills, how they have grown in their self-confidence and how they approach things differently. They write more. They volunteer more. When they get in groups and they're discussing, they bring confidence with them and they know that there are lots of different ways to look at one thing. That's something that I've been able to give them. We talk about in 10 years from now not really knowing what the jobs are going to be and what skills kids are going to need. Um, from what I've seen, from what I understand about patterns of thinking and how they impact our ability to, to um, uh, address any challenge that comes to us and have a way of understanding it and, and being able to use that um, information to be successful. I think that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that as these kill these little guys start building from year to year to year, and that's really my goal from central office. I want to make sure that we have teachers who have the capacity to continue to support children mm -hmm. who have developed these incredible ways of thinking through things so that whatever challenges the future provides for them, they'll be able to think through it and be successful. My hope is that we are we are really equipping our students with the skills they need to survive. I mean, plants are important, don't get me wrong. Life cycles are important. I think that if you were to ask anyone how a frog starts, they know it's a tadpole though. You know, like everyone kind of gets that. And I think we're caught up in like this theme world with education right now. And like, that's great. But for a kid who has no one who believes in them and no one who's gonna support them outside of here, if they have the patterns of thinking, if they have the ability to think about things and compare them and take a perspective and solve a problem and build relationships, I think that they're going to make it. They'll be okay. They'll be successful because they'll be able to manage any idea or any situation. But if we just say, here's a flower, label the parts and have them leave, I'm not sure that I'm doing my job fully in giving them the skills that they need to really walk away and succeed, even though they're five. Like, I really believe that all children are capable of this, and I wouldn't do it if I didn't think that, you know? And I think socially we have a duty to equip these children with skills that will carry them further than just being five and knowing what a tadpole is. We can do so much more.